Manu sir, can we start? Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sorry, hey, I think some issues. So, thank you uh, and welcome to this section. So, in the last section, we discussed about uh, text classification, text processing, and uh, we saw how practically we can do the things. So, in that case, uh, the main thing is representing the document. One challenge here uh, uh, there was how to represent the document. Or how to represent the meaning so we can have text document we can take some count from the text where word, word count can be taken or some other features how it can occur with some other words that frequency can be taken. whatever it is we need a numerical representation of the word or the meaning or the knowledge whatever it is so that it can be used by the machine learning part or the next counterpart so uh, all the computational models require the the data in uh, uh, numerical form, numerical vector form. So how to convert this text into a uh, document, text document, whether it in word level, document level, character level, whatever it is. How to convert this into or how to represent this uh, word, character, document or whatever the higher level into a numerical form or a, or a vector form that can be handled by that can be uh, taken care by the next uh, computational model so that is the main question of representation learning we need to represent them or we need a method to represent so here we will concentrate on how to represent semantics if you remember the levels in language processing it will start with phonology which deals with the speech kind of things phoneme how to pronounce the words speech units then speech units together we can form some more form morphemes that is morphological analysis how words are formed that is uh, morphological analysis then in the lexical analysis we will discuss about the word properties what is the meaning of the word what are the senses of the word what are the PS pos category of the word so such kind of lexical analysis is there then we have syntax analysis which deals with the structure of the data whether it is grammatically correct, whether the structure of the word ordering, we have words, how the words are organized in a sentence, that is lexical, syntax analysis. Then it comes semantic analysis, which deals with meaning. So we have to understand the meaning of the word, meaning of the text. So in order to understand that meaning, how we can represent this meaning. So what we are going to discuss is about the ways to represent this uh, semantics that is meaning so how we are understanding the meaning of a sentence we can understand it from the text the meaning of individual word suppose i have a word the boy ate apple how we are understanding the meaning we know what uh, what is the meaning of boy ate mango everything we know so together we can computing or combining the meaning of individual words we can understand the meaning of the word so a normal approach for understanding semantics, the classic approach is based on lexical, the lexical meaning, meaning of the word. Based on the meaning of the word, can we understand the meaning of a sentence? So that is lexical semantics. It has some limitation. We'll discuss what are the limitations of lexical semantics and a more flexible, feasible solution for representing semantics as distribution semantics. So this is what we are going to discuss in this class so what is semantics the semantic is study of meaning how a word get meaning or how word get uh, meaning is evolved okay <clears throat> so the question is what is meaning so uh, study of meaning is here so the question is what is meaning how we represent meaning or how the words are getting some meaning how come words and sentences have meaning 
for what is the main, uh, meaning of a word and a sentence like uh, what is the meaning of a word in particular sentence he so a so me a word so have different meaning it can be a verb it can be a noun so how we can understand the meaning of a word so do two people mean the same thing when they utter the word cat so how it related to the real world say i say cat i have an image of cat in my mind you have a different meaning so there are many such psycholinguistic properties that relate to the meaning so identifying the meaning representing the meaning of a word uh, of a meaning of anything as uh, uh, as difficult difficult thing so how to represent this as a question how to represent the meaning of the word is a question or how do we communicate how the other person get the right meaning or how it is get represented in the next pupil so there are so many questions okay so this these are the so many questions are there to answer when we are talking about semantics so our approach is on computational semantics how to understand the computational semantics the study of how to automate the process of constructing and reasoning of meaning representation in natural language expression so how to automate the process of understanding the meaning from a natural language text that is computational semantics mean so there are two approaches many approaches are there one is very formal lexical based approach which use some logical representation first order logic kind of things uh, sorry i'll switch off my fan some noise is coming Uh, sorry so the approaches include a formal representation using predicate logic first order predicate logic like for example the sentence john eat mango we can write there exists an x which is a mango which is eaten by john so eat is a verb is a uh, property that take two argument john and x where x is a mango for all x so in that kind of logical representation the earlier logicians they are called logicians so they tried logical ways to represent the meaning there are certain approaches that are successful failures are there successful uh, things are there so it is there other approaches using some statistical pattern can we map can we represent a word meaning into some n dimensional space a word can be represented in a space so that we can compute the distance between we can say those two words are similar means they are closer in this n dimensional space so that is the basic idea of distributional semantics so the basic idea of distributional semantics they believe that words have no fixed meaning the meaning of the word is based on the co occurring words so we'll get we'll understand the meaning of the word based on the co occurring word distributed it is not uh, specific to a word the meaning is not stick to one uh, one word uh so that is about the distributional semantic using statistical uh, so that is about the distributed statistics we will discuss more so there are two approaches i already mentioned one is lexical semantics the other one is distributional semantics there are two types of approaches to represent the compute uh, the semantics computationally one is lexical semantics the other one is distributional semantics we will see each one uh, one by one so the first part is lexical semantics lexical semantics is again study the word meaning so it assumes that we can understand the word meaning by combining the we can understand the sentence meaning by composing the word meaning for example again computational linguistics so we know what is the meaning of computational we know what is the meaning of linguistics so together we can understand what is meant by computational linguistics in simple sentences it is correct in many uh, normal language communication we can understand the meaning of the sentence by combining by composing the sentence the word by word meaning okay so that is the basic idea of lexical semantics we may have some dictionary kind of thing which contain all the lexical meaning of a particular word maybe in different uh, senses a word net is an example 
so wordnet contain lexical meaning of all the words available most of the english words its synonyms are available uh, how much similar the, the some weight score is also available the sense for example man man in uh, noun form what are the meaning man in say uh, verb form what is the, what are the uh, meaning so all these things are available in wordnet so using that information we can compute we can compose the meaning so compose the sentence meaning from word meaning that is the basic idea but it has some issues in this case how we are representing the meaning of a word in a computational way we have dictionary that say this is a definition for example wordnet every word have the fixed definition we can check the definition of two words to check the similarity between two words or acquiring broad uh, domain knowledge it, it may require for example if we are preparing some uh, specific domain uh, the the dictionary with respect to a specific domain we should have a broad domain knowledge should be required to understand the vocabulary otherwise we cannot uh, check what is the meaning of a particular word for example in biology i know as some gene complex name may be there how we can understand that this is the meaning this is a gene name then this gene name means this thing uh, without no understanding the medical terms or uh, biological term we cannot understand it properly so one issue of a handmade dictionary handmade lexical uh, kind of mean uh, composing the or understanding the meaning is very difficult task and it cannot understand it cannot efficiently keep this kind of polysemy that is a word which have multiple meaning so how to get the meaning of the particular word for example i will give you an example uh, sentence uh, it is better to uh, type here or somewhere uh, for example say the bank offer loans to students this is one sentence and a similar sentence the bank uh the bank offer loans to students the bank this missed points to graduates so these two cases you can take sorry this bank uh, sorry we can take two example the bank offer loans to students and the bank was moved to new location so in this case the first bank actually the bank offers means it is the bank the the institution the bank institution say sbi offers students uh, loans to students that is bank means the financial institution but in this case you can see the bank was moved to new location means the building this bank refers to the building the other bank the first sentence the bank refers to uh the 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 institute this is not a building it is not refers to the building it's refers to that actual bank but here it is refers to a building okay you can see this difference so this is called polysemy like the the same bank have different sense it is similar but one case it is a institutional bank but in other case it is a building bank so this kind of differences are there in natural language so how to understand the same word with multiple senses or multi word expressions may be there an expression may contain multi word like computational linguistics or so more words are there to be or not to be so how to uh, it is not single word a uh, group of words may uh, may be used to express something so how to understand the right meaning from this in this cases it is not easy but lexical semantics just knowing the word meaning we cannot understand it uh, properly 
for example you can see what is the good way to remove wine stains and salt is a great way to eliminate wine stain suppose we are asking one question what is the good way to remove wine stain so a computation model will check answer for this question what is the good way so something is the good way to remove wine stain so of the the thing if the model does not know that good and great are similar or remove and eliminate are similar they cannot they will never identify this as the answer though the text contain this as an answer salt is a great way it cannot identify that these are similar a lexical semantic based model cannot identify this relation okay because good and they they are not understanding that good and great are similar words or remove and eliminate have similar sense they can be used in similar points that kind of relations are not at all considered in a lexical semantic model so that is the issue this kind of similarity cannot be identified by this lexical semantic model birdnet is an example uh, for uh, uh, this as a great tool that can be used for uh, lexical semantic purpose birdnet uh, is a dictionary of synonyms dictionary of thesaurus uh, a computationally uh, it's available nltk uh, or many python interfaces are available for apis are available for birdnet so basically a large machine readable thesaurus also capture complex network of relationship between words the relationship include Uh, hyponymy relation meronymy relation or synset relation so this kind of relation hyponymy means uh, is a relation car uh, or car is a vehicle uh, or cat is an animal so that kind of hyponymy relation it, it will hold meronymy relation means is a part of uh, say tire is a part of wheels are part of vehicle uh, car or door is part of car so that kind of meronymy relation also synset a set of similar words synonyms synonymous word for example complete we can get a list of synonymous word so by this link clicking this link you will get uh, the wordnet uh, official wordnet website but it have the problems whatever we mentioned in the previous slide it is very difficult to compute this kind of complex relations and how to represent the meaning <coughs> Uh, if word is not available in the word net, a new word comes. How to identify the things? So there are lot of issues. So that is not a good model. Lexical semantics is a not not a good model, not a scalable model uh, to cope up with today's NLP uh, needs. So what we can do? So the other option is distributional semantics. So it is not by the meaning of the word. a word word have no fixed meaning the idea is that word have no fixed meaning but it understand the meaning it get a meaning based on the companion it keep so this is a basic idea so some of the motivational philosophy coming from the linguist side as uh, for the distributional semantic idea as in most cases the meaning of the word is its use how we are using if you read shakespeare or some other uh, great uh, people great others you can see that they are using the word for different meaning they their the actual meaning may be different but there and, and that particular point the meaning will be different so the meaning of the word comes from its usage okay that is one philosophy and a word may be known by the company it keeps so it is not an independent meaning based on the company it keeps based on the surrounding words the meaning may change meaning of the word change also we can see that the meaning of the word in the similar context are similar for example great and good they have similar it's not exactly same but they are surrogate they can uh, replace one the other one maybe the impact may be different great and good but they are similar meaning or eliminate and remove quickly immediately their usage will be different but they have some similar pattern similarity so we can see that words and their meaning have some like words can be compared words can be some compared based on the similarity so similarity means how close they are or how far they are in with respect to meaning uh, you may you may heard about a, a, a tamil song uh, in that say sollukum arthathukum thoorangal kedaiyathu so it's a popular song so solla and artham the word and the meaning the difference should be 
there should not be any much difference between these two things so that is the point uh, how we can understand the word and its meaning so a similar words have similar meaning means their difference is very small like they are close they are closer in the semantic space if we consider every word everything in a semantic space we are trying to project these words into a semantic space we can understand that these words are very closer very similar in the the closer the similar context words are similar in that space and far words say uh, they will be far in the semantic space so we can find a pattern a distributional pattern can be identified from this word meaning so if we can identify identify that pattern we can place them in the space so we need to derive a model of meaning from observable usages or in, uses in language so how it is used in uh, a language based on that we can fix a model we can identify a model that can represent this language a typical way to get approximation of meaning so a typical way to get an approximation of the meaning of word in distribution semantic is look their linguistic context in very large corpus for example wikipedia so if you want to know uh, you 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 come up with a new word you don't know the meaning of that word usually this will happen if you are when you are reading some uh, news article uh, from hindu or express you can see uh, you, you are not aware of the meaning right meaning of every words even without knowing the meaning of a, a particular word you can easily grasp what is meant by that article that sentence you can understand the meaning of that word an approximate meaning of that word from the contextual word right so typical way to get an approximation is based on the distribution of semantic is to look at the linguist so how it is used the one computation model that can understand this meaning is how it is distributed in other context or similarity what is the similarity what are the other words used in this context if we know other words and their similarity so we can map that this word is also similar to this meaning so because they are using in the similar context it have a similar meaning so in that way we have no fixed meaning to each word we are actually representing the word meaning based on the similarity with respect to the context so the linguistic context of a word is simply the other word so how we can identify the context linguistic context in the sense it is the nearby words for example see let us now assume the collect we will just take a uh, uh, we'll just take an we can do some one experiment uh, so suppose i uh, i programmatically collected single instance of word coconut in wikipedia and start counting how many times it appears next to tropic versatility the and subatomic four things tropic versatility the and subatomic so if we do this experiment on a uh, on a real wikipedia set we can found that this word coconut appears many more times next to tropic than subatomic because subatomic coming from a different domain tropical is very close to coconut because the landscape tropical landscape is very uh, favorable for coconut so if you take that uh, this relation you can see that coconut is more co occurring with tropic than subatomic so this will give an indication of what coconuts are about it is not related to subatomic it related to tropic so that kind of information will get so the distance between we can say the distance between coconut and tropic is very less compared to the distance between coconut and subatomic so this kind of computation is the basic idea of distributional semantic so simply we can say how we can map the words into a semantic space so that we can compute their similarity based on the vector distance so a words contextual representation is an abstract cognitive structure basically because it involve many common sense also accumulate from encounters of word various linguistic context for example he filled the vabnik with substance passed it passed it around and we all drank some this is one example and similar example we found a little vabnik sleeping behind the tree so two things two vap vapimak 
uh, I don't know how to pronounce this sentence. So, but it have two meanings. You can understand from the context. In this case, it is substance and everything. So something to be added to the water. But in this case, this is an animal which is sleeping. Like this is, uh, this is vap uh, vaping. So it is something behind the tree. So it means it is an animal. So which, in this sense, what is the uh, representation? So the same word have different representation in different sentences. That is what I mean. So with respect to this context, it have a different representation R1, which is not similar to this representation R2 because it is coming in, it is used in different context. So based on the context, we can understand, uh, we can understand the, the respective thing. Okay, that is what I mean by semantic. It's an introduction. Let's see how to model. So computational models that builds this, uh, that build semantic representation from a corpus of data. So we need a collection of data to learn this, this references. And these models dynamically build semantic representation in the form of high dimensional vector space. So based on this training data, we can read the data through a classical uh, statistical uh, analysis of context, we can get this representation. So this is also known as corpus based semantics, statistical semantics, word space model, vector space model, word vector. So these are some of the other model, other names for distribution semantics. Please note that it can be in word level. So it can be in character level. This representation can be extended to character level or to document level itself. So word level, sentence level, character level, document level, anything. The, the representation meaning that means we need a vector representation of the word. Somehow we need to create, compute the vector representation from a training data, from a set of corpus. So once we have the representation, for example, if it is a two-dimensional data, we can represent them in this, this plane, say, for with respect to two words, eat and drive, we can represent the words, say, cat and dog, which are very close to each domain, but car is very close to drive. So cat cannot be used for driving and dog cannot be used for driving. So there's semantic difference. So we are, we are defining the space with respect to these two domains, eat and drive. And the distributional semantic model will give some vectors. So cat and dog will be very closer in this domain. With, and it is very close to this eat domain. But drive will be very, uh, car is very close to drive. So this kind of difference, car and dog are very far. Car and cat are very far. Uh, eat and car is very far. So this kind of information you can get. And you can also measure this difference. This vector distance you can measure from this kind of representation. Semantic space have dimension which corresponds to the possible context. So in which context? This Here the context is defined by two things, eat and drive, and it is mapped in this two contexts. You can have multiple uh, words, so multiple contexts can be taken care. For example, you can take, uh, you can take a small uh, data set, an automobile, you, you are taking just uh, a, a small uh, data set, example, a dummy data set, and we are taking a target word, automobile, car, soccer, and football. Okay, this is an exercise. You can see you have a small data set with each, uh, with nine or 10 sentences. And we are considering the following vocabulary, wheel, transport, passenger, tournament, London, goal, and match. Our objective is to represent these vocabulary terms based on the context, the target words, automobile, car, soccer, and football. So how we can uh, write it? How closer the word? An informal algorithm is that pick the word you are interested in target word, define a context window, that is the number of words surrounding the target word. The context can be in general be defined in terms of documents, paragraph, but we are taking a context window. We are taking two or three words or three, four words. Then count the number of times the target word co-occur within the context window. So we can get a co-occurrence matrix. And that matrix represents a vector representation of the word. So suppose you are taking uh, automobile, how many times word and wheel, automobile and wheel occur in a sentence? Or automobile and transport, automobile and passenger, automobile and tournament. So for each word, say, a wheel can be represented as a four-dimensional vector, one, one, zero, zero. 
transport can be represented as 1200 passenger can be represented as 1100 so with respect to this context this four context words target words we can represent the each word each term in the vocabulary as a four dimensional vector just taking the count or occurrence how many times the word co occur with the context so this is one way so 1100 is a representative transport so we can check how close wheel and transport or wheel and passenger wheel and tournament or wheel and london you can see 1100 and 0111 so wheel and london have a large distance between less distance and wheel and goal is very uh, far wheel and match have uh, difference very uh, difference or even you can take the uh, similarity cosine similarity by taking the dot product between these two vectors anyway we can measure the similarity distance between these two things we can see how close or how far each and so for example with respect to the goal and transport domain you can see football and soccer are here and automobile and car are here so you can see automobile and car are very close in this domain football and soccer are close in this domain they are very far so this kind of this is practical also this is practically correct also so this is the advantage of a word semantic representation also using uh, this representation you can check how similar word and car automobile and car so you can just take the similarity dot product you will get four so they are very similar automobile and soccer its dot product is zero that means they are very uh, unsimilar dissimilar so uh, their their similarity score is very low automobile and football also only small similarity what compared to automobile and car so automobile and car are very similar compared to automobile and football or soccer and football is very similar so this kind of similarity computing similarity can be computed once we have this vector representation so word its meaning can be uh, represented by based on the contextual word context means a neighboring words we can represent we can derive some representation as a vector then once we have the vector we can measure how similar they are or we can compute the distance between these two things we can cluster them i mean whatever task you want you can do on this vectors okay so that is a basic idea of uh, similarity computation and this representation this vector learning is normally called word embedding so how to represent this uh, words we can use an embedding technique in the morning class also we used an embedding layer to represent the documents so word embedding or generally embedding is a way to represent this data it is capable of capturing the context of a word in a document semantic and syntactic similarity relation with other words etc so word embedding capturing the word and its document similarity everything into picture so generally we can say a word representation of a particular word getting a vector representation of a word so word embedding is how we can come distribution semantics can be represented as a vector word vector word to vec blow there are many approaches so how do we generate the word vector and how to how we can capture the context these are two questions to solve the issue so why do we need these things for example you take a simple sentence have a good day and have a great day so they hardly have different meaning so have a good day and have a great day are similar thing if we construct an exhaustive vocabulary let's say uh, it we have the word have a good great day so these are the five words 1 2 3 4 5 5 then how can be represented as a one hot encoding the simplest approach to get a vector a uh, word vector is one hot encoding you may already know what is one hot encoding so how based on this vector uh, this vocabulary have can be represented as 1000 a can be represented as 0100 and good can be 0010 so great can be 00010 that means we are representing each word into a five dimensional space because five vectors are there five uh, dimensions are there in that dimension if we are taking the similarity between good and great which is zero we can see a great difference between zero and uh, good and great which is not true 
So a simple one hot encoding cannot capture all the context, all the similarity. There is a problem. So we need some systematic method to capture the distribution of the meaning. Then only it will be correct. Otherwise, it will be just if you are just looking for some one hot encoding or some count vectorization, it may not capture it properly. Okay, so an independent word by word vectorization is not at all uh, sufficient. We need something else. What we need, we need a distributional semantics so that the similarity can be captured between this pandas and uh, a tiger. This is the difference. We can, once it is mapped in a semantic space, we can compute the similarity. So the similar word should have uh, closer in this space. So words with similar context occupy the closer spatial position. That is what we require. We need to find some models that capture these things. So there are two different approaches for computing the, uh, <coughs> sorry. So different types of word embeddings are there. One is uh, the approaches, one is frequency based embedding, the other one is uh, prediction based embedding. So we'll discuss these two approaches. And the, so frequency based embedding is based on the frequency of a word in particular context, a particular text. So approaches include count vectorizer, TF idea vectorizer we uh, discussed in the morning. And similarly, we can have a co-occurrence. And prediction based method include uh, continuous bag over method and script gram model. We'll discuss them uh, in detail. The first one is a very simple count vectorizer. So, what is count vectorizer? Very simple. We will prepare, a, we have a set of document. So, document collection, we are working on a document collection. So, a word vector can be prepared based on this document vector where the entries represent the count of a particular term in the document. So you can see document 1, the term 1 appears 10 times. Document 2, term 1 appears 0 times. So in that way, we can find a term document matrix. So the rows corresponds to a term vector, a word vector. The column corresponds to a document vector. For example, you can take two sentences, uh, a dummy that has a D1, he is lazy boy, she is also lazy. D2 is Neeraj is a lazy person. So the dictionary created by list of unique tokens, we have he, she, lazy boy and Neeraj. We removed all the stopper, we just take the pronouns and uh, nouns. So we have six uh, uh, words and two documents. So we'll get a two by six document. Either this also possible if we can take two by six or six by two. A document term matrix or a term document matrix. Both are fine. One we can get the other by taking the transpose. So it is not at all a problem. So here you can see the document one can be represented as a vector one one two one zero zero which corresponds to the count of this unique vocabulary. Or we can say he is a vector one zero Lacy is a vector 1, 2, 1. Boy is 1, 0. This kind of representation we will get. The problem here is both he and she have the same representation. Neeraj and person have same representation. We cannot distinguish them. We can say they are similar, but we cannot. Uh, we cannot. Uh, what I can say? We cannot. We cannot count them separately, like we cannot say. So that issue is there in count vectorizer. A vector, a word importance cannot be captured by just taking the count, by just taking the term frequency. So a better approach is TF idea based method, which is term frequency and inverse document frequency. So where term frequency is number of times the term t appears in the document divided by number of terms in the document. 
so df of this in particular document and this with the expected document in this way we can compute df of a document then idf it does not contribution of the word of the document that is words relevant to the document should be frequent a document say a word so this df says how the word is relevant with respect to how the word is relevant with respect to the document for example we are talking about messi uh, so the the faculty may say sorry so the uh, the messi may be very frequent in an article about messi the word messi football may be very frequent so we cannot distinguish the document if it is so we have a collection suppose the word messi is all all present in all the document frequent in all the document we cannot say this is a good keyword we cannot identify a particular document with respect to or set of document with respect to this messi so we should understand how the word is relevant with respect to the corpus so the first term frequency identify how uh how the word is how the particular word is relevant with respect to the document and the second measure that is idf is check how the word is relevant with respect to the whole collection so that is idf so idf we already mentioned it is calculated as log of n by n where n is the total number of documents and n is the number of documents small n is the number of documents in which the particular document term appears so where n is the number of documents and n is the document so we can compute idf of this as log of 2 so this will clearly capture if a word appears in all the documents its idf will be zero because log 2 by 2 so it is not relevant word we can ignore that word it will have a low tf idf score so the approach is very similar in tf idf vectorization it is very similar to count vectorization but here it, instead of just simply putting uh just simply uh putting tf idf uh, this count value we will use the tf idf value instead of tf idf weight value instead of uh this count value so it is very similar uh, approach then the other approach is a co occurrence matrix so co occurrence matrix say similar word tend to occur together and will have similar context so how similar the word occur in the context in the similar context so how many times this word co occur with the other word in a contextual window we can use in a in a particular context window instead of, uh, instead of taking uh, in the same sentence so co occurrence may not mean it should appear closer in the next as an x word or previous word we can take a window window of say 10 words or 5 word in a paragraph any any level of uh, window we can fix or even in a document how many times they co occur so that co occurrence say apple is a fruit mango is a fruit apple and mango tend to have a similar context that is fruit because fruit within the context fruit if you are taking apple and mango co occur so we can say apple and mango are similar so a con a similarity matrix can be prepared a co occurrence matrix can be prepared w1 so it is a square matrix kind of thing w1 w2 or even d2 it is better to write t1 d2 because term 1 term 2 it is term co occurrence matrix t1 uh, t2 up to uh, tn and column also t1 d2 dn t1 d2 dn so we will get a uh, matrix that says how many times t1 and t1 co occur t1 and t2 co occur t1 and t3 co occur t1 and t4 co occur like that we will get a vector co occurrence matrix so every vector either column or row we can take it as a uh, term vector term representation then usually this co occurrence matrix along with the sub, uh, svd that is similar value decomposition are used to create a good matri uh, a good representation single value decomposition will allow as a, uh, as a linear algebra operation which is very basic for latent semantic indexing that is topic modeling lsi and topic modeling this is uh, one of the fundamental part 
so in this part we can like in, in suppose we have a large vocabulary we have a large collection of documents a large collection of words its vocabulary size may be very high so you will get a large matrix m by n matrix so it can be reduced into a, a singular by constructing a singular value matrix we can reduce it into a small level a smaller level matrix we can approximate this into uh, like a feature uh, reduction kind of thing we can apply on this large matrix to reduce the dimension so svd can be applied so svd is basically we have a large matrix this coherence matrix we are taking some m words and n words and their coherence we are getting uh, this coherence matrix and which can be approximated as uh, uh, three matrix we have to con uh, product of three matrices u s and v transpose u s upper triangular matrix and v is the lower, lower triangular matrix and s s this these are eigen this created by eigen values and s are singular values a matrix a diagonal matrix that contains singular values and once we get a matrix like uh, this we can take the top r columns instead of taking all the columns where this r is less than m and n so we can take we can reduce it into an r dimensional vector we can reduce it into m by r matrix instead of m by n we can take m by r where r is very small compared to n so that is the basic idea of svd we may need additional one lecture to discuss what is svd but just understand that it is a dimensionality reduction method to reduce the number of uh, to reduce the size of this matrix we can we use a reduced svd matrix to do the task now that is about the uh, the frequency based method three methods we discussed one is uh, first one uh, is just a count or frequency vector second one is tf idf based vectorization and third one is yeah third one is uh, coherence matrix based vectorization in each case we can use the row or the column as a vector that represent the word or the document now we are moving to the prediction based method so prediction based method means it will predict a probability distribution over a given context over a context we will predict the probability distribution of the word which can be used as a method so there are two approaches one is so this prediction based method they uh, learn it from some uh, learn it from some uh, corpus based on the training it can learn the model and do it so continuous bag of model for example uh, there are two approaches uh, continuous bag of model and skip gram model so in continuous bag of model we will predict the probability of a word given the context for example we need to predict a, a context a, a word uh, embedding for a particular word say this example you can take cat jumped over the uh, puddle so so one approach is to treat the cat over the puddle as a context to represent jump so jump can be represented based on the embedding of all other words so we'll use all other words to predict the word so this is a simple architecture the detail architecture uh, beyond the scope of the discussion so you can the basic idea is that we can learn the context learn the uh, the representation from the representation of other words that is continuous bag of word model so it's a bag of word model means the word order is independent we'll take all the words available and based on the words we'll uh, we'll represent the will based on this context the order is not it is independent of the order we'll just take a contextual word a bag of words in that context and based on that words we'll predict the embedding of the next word okay so we may take uh, a window of uh, like uh, say suppose we take this wi we will take say four words in this direction also four words in the other direction so based on this we can compute the neighboring words we can compute the uh, the representation of uh, this method so word to back follow this this method basically it is a, a, a neural network that take embeddings of each word neighboring word context word and based on this embedding it will generate an output embedding output layer which is a dimensional vector n dimensional vector correspond to the 
target word. So this word, suppose jumped, we'll take all other words, embedding of all other the cat over the puddle, we'll take all the embedding. And based on this embedding, we'll predict the, we'll compute the embedding of jumped. The, the other approach is skip gram model. So one is continuous backup model, which take, which predict the embedding of a word based on the contextual word, embedding of the context word, nearby words. And uh, uh, an ultra op that is a, the reverse operation is skip gram model. So in skip gram model, we'll given a center words a gem, the model will be able to predict or generate the surrounding words how it can be that the cat over the puddle can be predicted. So it will give the output of the other words in the context. So this is very uh, out, uh, an upper layer understanding of what is word embedding. Uh, you can easily use word embedding into your model by uh, using so word to vec blog, such, such models you can use, pre-built model you can use into your, your program. So these are the two approaches that is based on the prediction. So one is continuous backup model where the context is predicted. Given the context, we will predict the embedding of the particular word. So multiple word given, we can predict the embedding. The, in this case, we will predict the, generate the surrounding embedding based on the embedding of the, based on the word given. So input level will give one word, based on that we will predict the probability of the other words, which can be, uh, representation <coughs> sorry one minute <coughs> so this is all about the embedding. Words are embedded. Words are, word embedding is there. Now we have the embedding. Now once we have the embedding, how we can use this embedding in some applications? How we can use this embedding? For example, we can use this learned embedding, learned vectors to understand or do some reasoning. For example, you can see, you know the reference, you know the lens relation uh, between man and woman, uncle and aunt and king and q so this kind of analogy we can predict for example suppose you want to predict uh, you know a is to b what is a and b then c is to d you have to predict for example man and woman you know so what could be the king for example if you have if you know what is man and man the the, the, the vector representation of man and king and woman you know so what could be the prediction you can easily predict it as q. This relation we can take by computing the vector distance. It's very simple distance formula. So arg max of suppose you have many options. So you for c is to uh, d you have to predict what is d. So for d you have many options. So for all options you can compute this distance w b minus w a a and b already given plus wc transpose into wx this dot product so x means the thing we have to predict divided by this distance this norm so basically you are computing a dot product uh, a cosine similarity between the known vectors and unknown thing so we'll try with all the unknown things and the one which maximize this score will be selected as the result the x which maximize will be selected as the d this score will be selected as C. so this kind of analogy or reasoning we can use this vector distance and almost all uh, all the uh, language models the first level is basically this vector embedding so based on this vector embedding only they are learning uh, what to learn what to do so based on this learning they can uh, move to the next step like embedding word representation and which is used in the next layer of uh, uh, language process. So this is basically what is meant by an embedding. So if you have any queries, uh, we can take.
do you have any queries on word embedding Participants, you can ask your queries. Give me five minutes. Sir, can we start by 315? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we can wind up quickly. Okay. Uh, it means uh, you're ready to continue now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then. Continue and five minutes give me. I can continue and complete by 330. Okay, sir. Okay. I feel that is better.
Yeah, I will uh, open my code. So I will quickly demonstrate how the uh, the embedding concepts, the two popular embedding word embeddings are used in uh, by in NLP domain. One is word to vec and glow. You may heard about. There are many other mod, uh, things. They are all already called. They are called pre-trained models. They trained on a large corpus. Uh, normally. Uh, creating a embedding with respect to our domain. Suppose we are working on uh, a text document. We have a set of collection, collection of documents, a small collection, say 100 documents. So creating an embedding with respect to that 100 document may not be uh, a, a good representation. As much as we have a data, we'll get better uh, result, better uh, good embedding, as much as we have examples, because it can capture more context information so as much data we trained on, uh, we'll get better representation. So we usually use, instead of uh, creating a word embedding with respect to our own models, our own document, we'll use some pre-trained models. So pre-trained embedding, which are already learned. The word embeddings are already learned with respect to some large corpus. For example, Wikipedia. So the embeddings are learned are based on the Wikipedia articles. So it's a general embedding. So that embedding can be used in our work. So pre-trained model is called pre-training. Instead of training with respect to our model for training, we are not training with respect to our document. We already use a model which is already learned. The output is already there. We are just using, reusing our model. You are reusing that embedding into our model. Okay, so that is a basic idea of uh, pre-trained model. So glow and vector, uh, word to vec are two popular uh, word embeddings that can be used in our uh, purpose. So this is very basic tweet classification. Uh, we are working on a tweet data uh, data set. So the objective of this program is to classify the tweets into uh, some categories, some fixed category. Label zero ones are there. Uh, positive, negative. We can take. In order to, we need to uh, say whether the uh, tweets is uh, say harmful or not harmful that kind of uh, distinction we have to make uh, so you can see this data set is very uh, imbalanced most of the labels are zero and very few labels are there so i'm not going to uh, sorry can you mute uh,
can you mute yourself please so this part i am not talk, uh, talking this best uh, just some pre processing part you can see which are the words are important word cloud of word cloud uh, kind of representation you can try so which words are very popular and which are the small words which are not at all important so this also we are not discussing this tokenization word getting uh, we are just removing the stop words and we are getting the tokenizer tokenized tokens that is what we have here is the important part we are using some uh, pre trained model okay we are using pre trained models for our data so how we can use those pre trained models especially glow and word to web and uh, in our data that is a question so what we can do is we can build the model using uh, glow data which is trained on twitter data which is a pre trained embedding is there we can use that embedding directly into our model and later part is same so if you remember the text classification using lstm that program we have used an embedding layer in which we specified the embedding things so instead of that we can specify instead of using a general embedding that learned from the document we can specify what are the weight we are going to use so we can use either uh, so many embeddings are already available in in keras so we can use any of this embedding so you can use glow or you can use uh, so this is glow on twitter fast text is another one or glow on wikipedia so all data have its own numbers uh, this much vocabulary and this much dimension is possible so what is the size of this document so for each word how many words are there and what is the dimension of this word so around 38000 words are there we can prepare the embedding uh, from this so we specified the embedding dimension uh, the one is from glow.twitter so what we are doing is that we are uh, we are loading we are preloading the uh, embedded matrix to this this program we are just re reusing we are not training the model we are using the embedding glow embedding or fast tag uh, fast tag in, um, uh, embedding whatever which is already available so glow dot twitter or glow dot wikipedia is available we can use this in this way we can uh, add them into our program so embedding one embedding two uh, embedding three are corresponding to three different embeddings which are uh, glow twitter glow fast tag and glow uh, wiki so three embedding metrics are already we have then when we are defining a embedding layer in keras we can specify that we are using embedding matrix 1 so you are using glow uh, on twitter for working with this data and you put trainable as false that indicate that in your, the your data set no need to train on this this layer this layer is uh, just simp uh, simply we are using a pre trained layer so we are making that trainable equal to false that indicate that this layer is need not to be trained so the change you have to consider is you have an embedding layer you are adding an embedding layer in which you can specify the weights which you are using as from a pre trained model so you are specifying the weights which are coming from particular model so that embedding can be used in any instead of uh, lstm you can use bidirectional lstm or uh, any other model bird model whatever it is so that is the only difference when it comes to a, a pre trained model so what you have to understand is the use of a pre trained model is nothing but a model that trained on a large corpus which can be reused for our purpose so we are not training the model on other things So this is how we are using the. Thank you, Tama. Exam. Oh, Omorani. The other parts are similar. Uh, you are just creating the model and compile the model. You will get the the corresponding output. You will do the same thing. You can uh, 
uh, train the model, you can see how the, the model accuracy uh, is increasing with respect to the epoch. Here actually we did for uh, this, this notebook discusses with uh, other embedding also. For example, with Glow on Twitter, the first experiment we used uh, Glow embedding. So here we obtained around uh, optimal threshold. We, we got around 9.96 uh, accuracy. And validation loss is around uh, 0.96 itself. So it is around 0.96. A similar thing we can do with uh, the next embedding, retrained embedding on uh, fast text. And you can do the same thing. You can see a similar, uh, you can compare which embedding is better uh, by comparing the accuracy, uh, loss value, uh, validation accuracy. Based on that, you can make comparison. Uh, also, you can compute the, uh, the decision uh, classification score based on different embeddings. So, based on that, you can Saturday class of the Bertin Sir, we are not audible now. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think. Okay. Okay, sir. It's audible now. So uh, I think uh, I was muted. So this is the way how we can uh, uh, use the embedding. So uh, what I mean, I will repeat. So first you have to take the embedding, uh, the word embedding, either where to with glow or fast tech, whatever embedding you are uh, you are going to use. The pre-trained models are available as a text file. You can first load that weight uh, into that contain each index, a word index, and the corresponding uh, weight vector will be there. So you can incorporate that uh, weights and each of your word in your dictionary, your vocabulary, you can take the corresponding vector and finally you will get an embedding vector, embedding matrix. Then based on this matrix, this is a weight matrix now, which can be 
used as a weight matrix in uh, matrix in your deep learning model so when you are creating an embedding layer you can specify that weights are coming from this pre-trained model so you need not to train the model trainable equal to false so though we have this much parameter it is non utility it will uh, it will actually reduce the time also okay so you can reduce the number of time also uh, time on training because you are not uh, training the model you are not trying to learn the weird embedding which is already trained and available the numbers are already available so no need to uh, train it again so that is the advantage of pre-trained model any pre-trained model you can use in the similar way the other part you are using a bi-directional stm layer or lstm layer rnl layer whatever layer you can, you want you can use how many layers one you can add you can have a final output layer and make the prediction so other part are same the only difference that how we are creating the embedding so this is how you can use a pre-trained word embedding into your model you can extend the classification that we discussed in the uh, the morning session with this pre-trained embedding that is what i plan for this session if you have any queries we can we can discuss participants you can ask your questions now Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such an informative session. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you all for the uh, participation. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you.